Hello, Um, Welcome Thanks, back. Guys. You know, last time you were here, Rosamond, you were pregnant with baby number baby two. Baby number two, yeah. I'm assuming everything happened? Yep, everything okay. went to plan. Great. So now you have two boys. I have two yeah. boys, yeah. Oh. Who are, who are uh, good news is they are a team. The bad news is they're quite a, quite a naughty team. So, oh, that yeah. sounds like fun, though. Yeah, but team, team, we like teams. Yeah, teams are So good. home for them, they're being raised in London? They're being raised in London, but they have some adventures. So... Um, uh, I, they've been in Jordan recently. We've been in Botswana. We've been in all for making movies. And um, wow, my older son's school's being very accommodating and letting us take him out every so often. So, so uh, yeah, they're being raised all over the place. It's got to be very exciting for them, I, I would so. think. And know? they have this wonderful idea that adults are just really fun, which is nice. <laughs> right. You know? well, that will change. Won't <laughs> right, right, the right. teenage so, years will come. I guess so. But um, yeah, they've had they've had some they've had some pretty good adventures. We were just in Jordan, and um, I took them camping in the desert. Uh, I was making the movie that we're talking about, a private war, and. Um, right. I booked an experience to go out with the Bedouin and ride camels and sleep under the stars, but I booked this experience which was called a bivouac experience, which I thought meant a rudimentary tent, but I didn't realize it meant no tent. Oh, so there's no tent? <laughs> there was no tent, no. So, so you sleep out under the in sky? The I sleep out under the stars, and I had decided that if we were going to be in a tent, I should really take some bedding, so I took this very nice crisp white linen from the, from the Grand Hyatt in Amman, right? <laughs> And then, of course, you know, you arrive in however many thousand kilometers square of sand, and the idea of unfurling these white sheets from the Grand Hyatt seemed, frankly, absurd. So, obviously, I, I, um, I didn't do that. But we, then, won't, we, we won't, won't tell, tell the Grand no, Hyatt. We, no. <laughs> we don't transmit that far. Um, so, how, how, how has your world changed since Gone Girl? I mean, that was such a, a, a big movie. Yeah, or Girl Gone. I like that. It was... <laughs> Maybe we would have sold more copies. We've seen it so many times we like to call it Girl Gone. I got, I, I got makeup remover in my eyes on Wednesday at it's Halloween. True. I still can't see. He has not been right since Halloween yeah. oh, on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> I, know the, I know the feeling. Um, uh, yeah, life, life did change in, in that people are slightly wary of me. Um, Is that true? So, yeah, some people. I was in... Uh, I remember soon after the movie came out, I hadn't... I mean, I appreciated that it was... Uh, a movie that a lot of people wanted to see in the theatres, but I was in Soho in London and I was coming back from some work and I stopped in a deli to buy some, uh, to buy some ham. I wanted some, you know, Italian ham. And this woman was slicing this uh, Serrano ham and she, you know, the, one of those big machines. Yeah. And I was just like, she was just looking at me. I was like, oh, careful lady, you're going to cut your fingers off in a minute. And then she was like, are you Amy Dunn? And I said, uh, I said, N no. And she was like, you really, you really, sh why are you here? And I said, right. well, because I, I live in London. She's like, you do? And it was like, her face was just saying, you should really not be out on the streets yeah. and you should definitely <laughs> not be buying cold cuts. Guess what? <laughs> That's when you know you're a good actor, when the deli lady is <laughs> terrified. Still. Still, the thought of that machine and the finger is all wrong. Coming up, we'll yeah. find out more about the transparent of Rosemary's latest role. Stay with us right after this. Did you miss UFC champ Daniel Cormier showing Ryan some moves? Check out our clip of the day. Just go to our website to watch. What's with the fancy bra? Girl, is this a bra? This is not a bra. This is La Perla. I mean, if anyone's gonna pull my corpse from a trench, I want them to be impressed. <laughs> right. The tough war correspondent. <laughs> A very gripping story about a real person. Yeah. Um, Marie Colvin. Yeah. Marie Colvin. She was a she was an American-born journalist for the Sunday Times in England, and she went to some of the most dangerous places on earth because she believed that, you know, unless someone went to these places and told the story of the people on the ground, um, and cut through what governments were trying to say, you know, no one would really know the truth. And she 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 had a total commitment to giving voice to the voiceless, but she was also this confounding, glamorous. Um, fun um, bundle of contradictions, you know, also a huge heroine, but uh, you know, intensely glamorous, as you see from La Perla. You know, what right. you know, very few war correspondents probably care about 
the fine lingerie underneath mm -hmm. their right. combat gear. But um, um, that was her through and through, you know, huge sense of style, huge compassion for people. And she just kind of lived a hard and committed life. Um, like every day was her last day on earth. Some I think say. you have to go to these places knowing that you could be killed. And right. I think that's a kind of level of courage that I truly admire. What sort of, playing a, a real person, what sort of things did you have to really focus on or do in terms of movements or, or transformations to well, play? When I first could have got into studying Marie and I watched footage of her online, there's something so compelling and just charismatic about her and I thought okay I don't want to transmit this through me I want to get this odd physicality that she has I mean my goodness she's someone whose career and life in the field sort of wore heavy on her you see in that clip she's wearing an eye patch she had her eye um, shot out by a rocket propelled grenade when she was in Sri Lanka and that was a time when she actually stood up she was under a fire and she stood up and she said I'm a journalist, I'm American, and at one stage that would have been a shield, you know, that would have protected you, and, and really that was the turning point. And obviously we're now in a climate now where journalists are, you know, it is not safe to, be, to declare yourself a journalist. It right. is absolutely not a shield, it might even make you a target. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of, I wanted to take her on in my whole body, which is changing the way I walk and, and actually kind of carry that tension that she carried with her. I actually shrunk a centimetre yeah. and a half. Um, playing her because I, I, I was so determined to sort of hold my shoulders up there and I went for a medical for my next job and they measured me and, uh, and they said, you know, 172. I said, well, I'm not, I'm 173. She said, well, actually, you're 171 and a half, but I rounded it up. And I was wow. like, really? I said, can we check that again? Wow. And um, so I thought it was kind of cool that someone can live in your body and actually affect you permanently yeah. <laughs> until you get on a rack. She did have that posture of somebody that was expecting Something incoming fire. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you, 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 you are in a place where you can be shot at. And she was particularly someone who thought you cannot get the story unless you're as close as you can possibly be. And, you, you know, you're, you know she's, she's with the civilians on the ground. You know, she was actually killed in Syria in 2012. She was one of the only journalists in the besieged city of Homs. Um, and she just couldn't leave because she said, you know, there are 28,000 people trapped in this city. The world doesn't know what's going on. And if I leave... And that story is not out there. Oh, no. Well, you can see this powerful role in a private war, which is in theaters in New York and LA today and nationwide, November 16th. Great to see you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to learn how to run. Running 101.